meal that you guys probably already know how to cook, but it will be um, kind of a magnolia fusion. I was talking with Brother Michael the other day and on, in the Brothers Hamlet, so now the brothers, we eat separately from the sisters, uh, except for days of mindfulness. And um, on the brothers team, there's only one brother per team. So one brother cooks a day, and then it's so a rotation, there's five of us, and then we rotate amongst the five brothers. And the sisters, they have at least two or three sisters per team. And so they can split the kind of the, the meal. And so the brothers, we kind of have to think from everything from A to Z. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we have to think everything from A to Z. So um, luckily for breakfast and lunch, we kind of have a set diet. So breakfast, we usually have oatmeal and uh, the beans that we had this morning with bread and fruits. So it's very simple. So we don't have to think much about that one. And then for lunch, we usually have rice. So Vietnamese community is actually, Vietnamese culture is usually rice, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so we usually have white rice with either a, um, uh, a salty dish or um, a stir-fried dish. Or, uh, and, uh, and in Vietnamese culture, you always have to have soup for lunch. So there's never a time where you will never see soup for lunch here. Um, no matter how many people it is. If it's 500 people, you still have soup for lunch. And so uh, that's a great thing about it. Also, um, I was talking with Brother Michael and we were talking about Magnolia Fusion. It's because uh, we have many different kinds of, so in our community, our, our worldwide community, our international community, we're very international. So we have many cultures. So here in Magnolia, we're predominantly Vietnamese, but in our other centers, we have Italian brothers and sisters, Indonesian brothers and sisters, uh, Dutch, German, you, you name it, we're kind of everywhere. And so uh, a lot of their food is, gets incorporated into our diet. And so um, for me, I, before I came here in Magnolia, I lived in Plum Village for seven years, and I had a wonderful chance to travel around um, to many different places, to, so um, Italy, England, all that stuff, and so um, even to Asia. And so I had a chance to really pick up cooking, uh, learning from uh, our brothers and sisters, and so we did have some brothers and sisters that used to be chefs, uh, professional chefs, that became monastics, and so they also kind of showed the ropes a bit. Um, but also for me, it was mostly my mom. And so um, I grew up here in Mississippi, and um, my mom, she's close by, and I just remember at a little age, you know, just my mom cooking and me just standing here, just mesmerized by what she's doing, even though I didn't know what she was doing, but I was very mesmerized by what she was doing. And so um, this this year was kind of inspired by when I went to England one time, and uh, I also had a... Um, an Indian uh, for, uh, of Metro India a room, as my roommate when I first was uh, becoming a monk. And uh, he also showed me a lot of things, which was very, very interesting. And so I really enjoyed uh, the dishes uh, that he made. And so this is a very simple dish, very simple, as the brothers and sisters shared this morning. Simple, quick, easy. And so uh, that's what we want to do. So I kind of put the ingredients and everything on there. I tried my best uh, to do a um, to make it kind of clear. And so um, here I have, my hat's falling, my hat's falling, my hat's falling, okay. So here I have split red lentils. So this I've already washed. So I wash it under, in this kind of a strainer here. So under some running water and then usually uh, just kind of mix it and wash it and then until it uh, becomes clear on the bottom. So when the water becomes clear. And so usually with one cup, so this is one cup of red, split, split red lentils. And so I would have the equivalent of three cups of water. So actually I wanna go ahead and put this on the, on the fire, just so we can get this going. So we wanna bring this to a boil and let it cook. So this, it will, turn out really nice. There will be no excess water, there will be no... Um... How much water is So this is three cups of water. So for one cup of lentils, you'll get three cups of water. Okay. 
So we'll let this cook and hopefully by the time I'm prepping everything, this thing comes to boil at the, at the right time and so on and timing will become great. If not, you'll see me in, uh, in kind of a, in a, in a flux. <laughs> so I'll give this a little mix, a little stir here. I'm gonna let this boil. If anybody sees it foaming up and overboiling, let me know. <laughs> Doll, I mean, I call it magnolia doll. You can kind of call it whatever. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I just call it magnolia doll. This is just a recipe that I learned from uh, my friend. He called it doll, so I call it doll. So I'm just gonna add magnolia because we're here in magnolia. And um, yeah, I'm very bad with names. <laughs> and so now we'll continue on to, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the spices and everything together. And so I have kind of, uh, I have tomatoes here that will kind of be the base of this, as, lo as well as uh, onion. I have some onion. Then we'll have some garlic and some ginger. And so I should want to get started with the onion first. So I'm going to take, take this half of the onion. And I'm just going to, also when I'm in the kitchen, you know, us being with one brothers uh, on a cooking rotation, you gotta do it kind of quick in order to get as many dishes as you can out and you wanna make it efficient. So I'm kind of lazy when it comes to, to chopping. So I just, you know, uh, when, like my sister Kaigam earlier, she, everything has to be very beautiful. For me, it's just kind of whatever you can eat, you know, just to make it nice. And so I just wanna get this little dice. this guy too. Sorry, this is kind of in the way. <laughs> you got the picture, right? Okay, great. All right, and I'm going to take about maybe four cloves of garlic. And I thought one thing that was very beautiful that the sister shared this morning was, uh, you know, we learn from the experiences of others. And so, um, for the garlic, you know, just gonna use how my brother used it this morning. Just give it a nice smash. And the skin comes right off, like so. And actually for the, um, for the garlic, we want to have it minced. Here we go. <laughs> Luckily, I was close. <laughs> so just give this a stir. So th what will happen is the lentils will start eating up this water. I'm actually gonna turn down the heat a bit. There we go. Just let that have a little bit of fun there. It's a lot different when you're cooking with people looking at you. <laughs> and then I'll have a little bit of ginger here. use half of this here like so so um, I want to peel this ginger and so there's many ways to do it um, 
There's one way that I thought was really cool is you take a spoon. I don't know if you guys probably learned this way. So you can take a spoon and you can just scrape the ginger off like this. And it's very quick and you don't take off so much ginger. And so it's a very quick way for you to just uh, peel the ginger in a nice way where you're not wasting so much. And so there's also the way with the knife, but you kind of waste a little bit more than you want. And so you can just take a spoon and just scrape it here, like so. So this ginger gives it a really, really nice fragrance. And once you're eating the doll, it gets really nice when you just hit into one of the gingers. When you take a bite and then you get a little taste of ginger. I also want to give this a little mince here. Just kind of the same size as the garlic. Always keep an eye on the lentils. Just make sure it's not burning on the bottom. Turn the heat down a bit. So I actually won't use all this ginger, it's quite a lot. I'll give it to the cooking team. <laughs> okay, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started with our spices. So in a skillet here, you have a small skillet, just get the fire going, make sure the heat is up. Uh, so I'm gonna use coconut oil. Uh, you can use any kind of oil that you like, but I really like coconut oil because it really gives it a nutty flavor. Um, and it's healthier, <laughs> I guess. Um, so we get the skillet hot. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of coconut oil in it. So this is uh, refined expeller pressed. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but um, it's very nice, it's very nice. So I'm gonna put a tablespoon of coconut oil in. And once the coconut oil melts, I'll just let that play in there, it's kinda like butter. Just let it melt. Okay, I got everything I need. So over here I also have spices. I have um I have cumin, some ground cumin, some ground coriander. And this is ground turmeric. Uh, this ground turmeric is actually very special. So uh, actually, brother Fakhnya, the brother who showed you how to cook the mushrooms this morning, this actually came from his home. So his mother, so every time, so we actually don't buy turmeric. So his mother always donates turmeric for us. And so they have a turmeric garden and then they, she prepares it, ground cumin, just like this here straight from his home, so this is 100% organic, 100% from Vietnam. And so uh, it's very wonderful, and it's very different flavor and flavors. So um, you can thank Brother, Brother Handsome for the, the turmeric. And so now the oil is melted, so now we're gonna put the onions, just kind of everything in together. Onion, garlic, and ginger. So while we're letting this cook, we gotta go and cut some tomatoes. But before that, let me give this a little mix. So you can use any kind of oil for this. You can use uh, vegetable oil, sunflower oil, canola oil, whatever you like, whatever you have around the house. Don't go out of your way to buy coconut oil just for this. So. Um, let that sit there. Give this another mix. Now we're going to cut some tomatoes. 
I'm gonna cut about maybe three, three tomatoes. So I've already washed these tomatoes. I usually cut these ends off here. When I was in Italy, they were very, you have to do that. You have to do it or else, or else you go to jail kind of stuff. And so I'm, a, I'm actually cut, I'm gonna dice these a little bit smaller, uh, just so it cooks quicker. And so one cup of lentils, it, you can serve about maybe uh, about six people. So for one cup of lentils, depending on how much those people eat. Turn the heat down a bit. So I'm gonna slowly start to add the tomatoes just to cool it down a bit as I go. It's funny, I was telling my brother that um, I was gonna cook this dish for this retreat. So my brother, he's a college student that goes to Ole Miss just right here. And uh, he loves Indian food. And he was like, so are you gonna make chapati and naan and uh, samosas and all that stuff? I was like, I was like, man, are you crazy? <laughs> I don't even know how to make this. This is the only Indian food I know how to make. Uh -oh. So actually, just two tomatoes is fine. So we're gonna let this cook here. I don't know if you can smell that. Lentils, can't really see them. I'm sorry? Ah, you're right, I should, I should ask him. Yeah, I should ask him. So we wanna break this down a bit. Then we can add our cumin, coriander, and turmeric. This is, will give it a very, very nice color. While we're here, we also want to add some salt and pepper. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and then I'm gonna add some salt later to taste. I want to mix everything in. about maybe a teaspoon of salt. And some pepper. The pepper also comes from Brother, uh, Brother Fabian's home as well. So. Okay, let's get into where I like it. <laughs> Double check over here. This is thickening up very well. Turn the heat down. I'll switch it so you can see it in a minute. That's the way I want to get it. I don't know if you guys can see that. So that's a, this is about done. This is where I want it. A big piece of onion here. I should put that down a bit. Okay, I'm gonna turn. Shall we switch? So you can see. Okay, 
And then as that's cooking, I want to just pour it in. Just pour it inside. And then, it's going to change color. That a nice little mix here. So once that's done, it's, once it's nicely incorporated, you just go ahead and taste it, and just uh, taste it to your to your flavoring, to what your um, two spoon method, two spoon method. So one spoon, just so if you want to taste multiple times, just one spoon, like this. A little bit more salt. We're good to go. Just add about half a more teaspoon, half a teaspoon there. One last taste. let you guys judge so I do have a little bowl of rice here very nice my sister made it for me I'm actually gonna put it here there we go you give it rice if you know how to make chapati <laughs> chapati if you know how to make naan so we're gonna actually split this into two so we can pass it around. And then it's nice to have some uh, cucumbers and tomatoes on the side. So it gives it a nice freshness because there's a lot of seasoning inside of the, the dough. And so when you get a little bit of cucumber, cucumber or tomatoes, maybe I'll slice them up for you guys. So I, tend, I have a tendency to eat very salty, so I don't know if it's a little too salty. Hope it's okay. Wonderful, thank you so much. So I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments or anything. I have a different question, what is Vegeta? So this, this is actually, so Vegeta, this is, uh, this is seasoning. This is some special seasoning that we, that we use, so this is, um, it has MSG and stuff in it, and so this is, so in some dishes it requires, uh, in Vietnamese dishes, so. Would you use yes, it for soup? Yeah, for soups, for soup stock, and, and so on, and so it gives flavor to soup stock, and, and, and so on. Similar to the or like chicken broth? Yeah, very similar, so this is kind of like vegetable broth, like you can use it as a vegetable broth if you add some water with it, and so, um, uh, yeah, so this is just some special seasoning. Um, we don't use it as much. It's just, it's just there. So, yeah. You had a question. The chickpeas that were served today for lunch. Um, do you know what? I've never made chickpeas, so I have no clue. Right. Tasty. So I'm gonna try it. So it was curry. Do you know how they made them? I mean, I'm guessing she made it with turmeric. Just very, very, very yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Actually, chickpeas is a very. Um, it's very easy, like you don't have to do much with chickpeas because chickpeas can do kind of everything on their own. Actually, a very simple way to make it is um, you can just kind of get onions. You can chop some onions and some margarine and then you just kind of cook down the onions and then uh, the margarine will do its work because it's, it's a very, the chickpeas is very, um, it's very rich. And so when you add it with the margarine, it, ma it makes a very nice dish. So just salt, pepper, and uh, onions and margarine. And so that is very simple, but it's, it, 
just like you made a five star meal with the, with those chickpeas. And so chickpeas, you have to soak them overnight unless you buy them from the can. And so, and then you have to cook them in the morning. And so, um, yes, yeah, hope that's helpful. Any questions? Was it okay? Great, wonderful. There's still some left, so hopefully there's some for dinner. Or if you want to get some more, if you want some more. Okay, yeah. So this is a magnolia doll. And that's, uh, hopefully you can go home and make it on your own. And so, uh, not too difficult. So thank you so much. And um, I guess we'll take a little break and then we'll head on to the next dish, which is very fun because uh, you'll get a chance to actually make your own. And so we'll get, we'll get our hands dirty a bit. <laughs> and so, yeah, please, uh, thank you so much. And uh, please, we'll take a, a little break. If you want, you can wash your hands before because we'll be making some spring rolls. So.